Hello and welcome back to Docker Essentials. In the previous video, we worked through the process of installing Docker on our laptop or desktop, and we also ran the Hello World container, which serves as a great test to help us verify that everything is working properly. In this video, we're going to expand on that and run yet another container, but at the same time, we're going to also explore what it even means to run a container and build on that knowledge. Now, before we dive into that, I want to mention the sponsor for this particular video, which is Kernel Care. Specifically, Kernel Care Enterprise, which is a new member of the Kernel Care family. Keeping servers safe, compliant, and ensuring constant uptime is a full time job. One that can't be left to chance, and one that must be fully automated and fully supported. To do that, you need a live patching tool that integrates with automation tools and vulnerability scanners supported with the latest patches, and one that lets you decide which patches are rolled out across your organization and runs within your firewall. And Kernel Care Enterprise does this. It provides you with more integration, support, and control. It works in your local infrastructure via ePortal, a dedicated patch server that runs internally but outside your firewall. It acts as a bridge between internal patch servers and the main kernel care patch server. This approach is ideal for staging and production environments that need strict isolation from external networks or require more stringent controls over the patches that are to be applied. Kernel Care Enterprise is available for all major Linux distributions and includes priority support 24 by 7 via live chat, email, or ticket system. Check out Kernel Care Enterprise via the URL that's on the screen right now or give the link that's in the description a click. Thank you so much to Cloud Linux, the company that brought Kernel Care Enterprise to life for their continued support of Learn Linux TV. I really appreciate it. And now, let's have some fun with Docker. Now that we have a fresh Docker installation, let's go ahead and use it. The first command that I want to show you guys is Docker Images. What this command will do is show you all of the Docker images that you've downloaded and are locally available on your machine. As you can see here, we have a container image for Hello World, which is the container that we ran in the previous video. But right now, that's actually the only container image that we currently have. So let's look at the process of looking for and then downloading an image that we might want to run later. So what we can do is type docker search. And then we could type a keyword of a container that we want to search for. So, for example, if I want to run an Ubuntu container, I could run docker search Ubuntu. Simple enough, I'll press enter. And I might need to make the font size a little bit smaller here. A lot of information. Let's go ahead and run that again. So there's a lot of information, and yes, it is wrapped a bit. But if I scroll up, we can actually see that there is a container named Ubuntu right here. And that's simple enough. We can go ahead and download that one. But we also see that there's quite a few containers here that came up in the search results. And you might be wondering what is up with the naming scheme. So for example, we have Ansible slash Ubuntu 1404 Ansible. We have this person's name, I believe, slash Ubuntu. So we have quite a few things that came up in the search results. So the way that this breaks down is you have Docker repositories and we have the repository, for example, this one, and then the name of the container image right here. Now this one is kind of an outlier because it's just simply named Ubuntu. And that's not extremely common, but you know, it's okay. At the very least, we were searching for an Ubuntu container and we found one, it's this one right here. So now that we know the name of the container that we want to run, at least in this example, let's go ahead and download the image for it. And to download an image, all we have to do is run docker, and then pull, and then the name of the image, which in our case is Ubuntu, so I'll press enter. And it went ahead and downloaded the image. So if we type docker images again, 
we can see that we actually have the image for the Ubuntu container right here. Now we didn't actually have to download the image for Ubuntu. In the previous video we ran the Hello World container, and when we did that, it automatically downloaded the image that was required for that container to run. So we could have actually entirely skipped this step, but I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware that you can actually download images, and that might be useful if you want to run a container later, you just want the image for now, and have it available when you do go and run it. But now you know how to do that, so I'll clear the screen. Now that we have the image downloaded, we can now run a container created from that image, and to do that, the command is actually very simple, it's docker run, and then the name of the image that we want to create a container from, in our case, that's Ubuntu, so I'll press enter. And it doesn't look like anything happened at all. All it did was just return me back to the bash prompt, so what's up with that? So the thing is, Docker containers exit if they have nothing to do. If they have no jobs, why run? Essentially, it's a waste of resources to keep a container running in the background if you have nothing to use it for, if you have no purpose for it, or it's not going to be running any jobs. So as soon as I started the container with Docker run, it immediately exited because I didn't give it anything to do. Now sometimes a container will have an automatically started application that will run inside the container as soon as you start the container. The Ubuntu image doesn't have that. And to better illustrate this, what I'm going to do is give you another example. I'm going to do this, docker run, and I already know that there is a container called nginx because I actually looked for it off camera. So I will type nginx and I'll press enter. And it says that it's unable to find the image. Now it's downloading it. And now it's actually running. Now we'll get back into this in a later video. But what I want to illustrate is that the command prompt didn't actually return. I can't actually type any more commands right now. This is taking up my terminal and I'm kind of stuck. Well, not really. I could press control C to break out. And now I am back to the bash prompt. So now what you saw was we ran the Ubuntu container and it immediately exited because it had nothing to do. And then I ran the nginx container and unlike the Ubuntu container, it kept running. Why? Well, it had a job to do. The container was built with an instruction that it needed to run a command as soon as the container was started. And that command is just going to keep running. Basically what it did was it just ran nginx. Now in a later video, we will actually see examples of how to interact with an application that is running inside of a container. But the only thing that you have to remember right now is that when containers have nothing to do, they exit. Now at this point, an obvious question you may have is how do I see which containers are running on my system? I'm glad you asked. So for that, we could run docker and then ps, and then we could press enter, and this should give us a list of all the containers that are running on our system. And there aren't any containers running on our system because the Ubuntu container, that exited immediately. And then when I ran the Nginx container, I had to use control C to break out of it. And as soon as I did that, it no longer had something to do and then it exited. So now we have nothing running. But what we can also do is add the dash A option at the end of Docker PS. And what that will do is show us all of the containers running on our system as well as the ones that were running. So if I press enter, we can actually see that there are several containers here that were running on this system. So now you know. You could use Docker PS to see all of the containers that are running, and then add dash A if you want to see everything, even the ones that have exited. You can see the status right here. The text is wrapped a bit because of the font size. I want to make sure that even the fans that are vision impaired, for example, are able to see my videos and the text. I don't want anyone to have to squint. But anyway, we can see right here that these say exited. Now there's actually several ways that we can force a container to keep running. I'm going to show you one of those methods right now. So last time we ran docker run ubuntu, and it just exits. But let's modify that command a bit and see if we can keep it running. So right before the name of the container, I'm going to add dash it. And then at the end of the container, I'm going to type slash bin slash bash. And let's run it and see what's different. Now this is pretty cool. I actually have a command shell that's attached to the container itself. 
That's awesome because now I could run any command that I would normally run on an Ubuntu system right here inside this container. So for example, I could run apt update. Just to update the package repository index. That's an important thing to do. And I don't know about you, but my favorite text editor is actually Vim. So let's see if it's working. Well, it's not installed. And to be honest, I actually knew that. So let's go ahead and install Vim inside this container so I can go ahead and use it. I'll just run apt install Vim hyphen nox. That's just my preferred Vim package, but it really doesn't matter which version of Vim you install or you know whatever package you install, it really doesn't matter because this is just an example anyway. But you can go ahead and install a package if you'd like. I'll install this one. Now press enter. So as you can see, the output is basically the same as if you were doing this on an actual Ubuntu system. But we're running this inside a container. So if you are running the Ubuntu container, you might get a prompt such as this one, which is asking you to set up your geographic area. Since we didn't go through the installation process that we would normally go through when installing Ubuntu, we didn't get a prompt to set anything up when we actually ran this because, well, it was already pre-installed inside the container. So what I'm going to do is just type 12 for US in my case, and then I am actually in Michigan. So I just typed eight and I'll press enter and then it's setting everything up. And then now I can actually run Vim inside this container. How cool is that? Now, the thing is, you don't actually have to install Vim inside the container. You can install anything you want. Just think of an application that you like to use and you can install it inside the container. Now, one thing that's beyond the scope of this series is that if you go to install a GUI application inside a container, you can get that to work and yes, you can also get audio to work as well. At one time, I've actually installed Steam inside a container and played Skyrim actually from the container. It's pretty awesome. It took a lot of work because that's not generally a use case that Docker is known for. But that just goes to show you that you can use Docker for all kinds of things. But my point is, though, that if you want to try to run a GUI application and have that GUI application show up on your computer from the Docker container, you can do it but it is beyond the scope of this video. There's a little bit of fine tuning that you have to do to get that to work. So what I'm going to do is press Control D to disconnect from the container. And now I am back to my normal command shell. Let's go ahead and run that container again. I'll just press the up arrow, recall the previous command that we just ran, and I'll press enter. And now we're back inside the container. So maybe I wanna write some notes. I'll just open up Vim and I'll get a notes file started but Vim isn't found. We Wait, we just installed Vim. Why would Vim not be here? I was just using it. So actually the problem is that containers by default, they don't save changes. So the Docker image is a blueprint that allows you to create a container. And if what you're trying to run isn't inside the image, then it's not going to be inside the container. Now, when I exited the container a few moments ago, the container no longer had anything to do. Since it didn't have anything to do, the container exited and that was it. The container's gone, it's deleted, it's completely trashed. And that's an important thing to keep in mind is that containers are not stateful. When you are running a container and you make changes inside that container, the changes are not saved. The changes need to be in the image because the image is the blueprint that the container is created from. When you exit the container, the container is lost and all of the changes are also lost so the second time I ran this container, it actually created a new container from the image. So I'll disconnect again and I will show you exactly what that looks like. So if I run Docker PS, you can see that no containers are currently running. So I will just add the dash A option here. And we can see that there's several container IDs. Each container that we run gets its own ID. And the first three here were all run from the Ubuntu container image but they have different IDs. Because they have different IDs, they are different containers. They were created from the same image, but again, changes are not saved by default. Now I could very easily just run the container again, like this, and I can actually install Vim again, and I could actually do a one-liner and do something like apt update, then ampersand ampersand apt install vim-nox, 
That'll get it installed very easily. So basically, I'm doing all of this work all over again. And I wanted to make sure that I told you guys about this early on in the series so that you don't actually just spend a long time setting up a container, getting it, you know, perfect with all of your favorite applications and tweaks and config files just to have all of that work just go away. That wouldn't be a fun day. We will actually look at how to save changes in a container and make the changes permanent later in the series, so don't worry about that. But now I have the Vim package actually installed. I can use it. But like I mentioned several times now, as soon as I exit this container, then all of my changes are gone. And in a few videos from now, we're actually going to go over how to save changes like I've mentioned. So just bear with me. We will get to that. But right now, I think the most important thing for you to do, for you to practice, is to practice pulling down images and running containers from those images and that would be the best thing because that way you have all of the practice you need before you move on to the next video. So there you go. We're learning more and more about Docker as this series continues and it only gets better from here because in the next video we're going to explore how to keep containers running. I mean, let's face it, a container that starts and then immediately exits, that's not very useful. So we're going to begin in the next video exploring how we can make containerization work for us, keep things running, keep things persistent. And that video is already up on my channel, so I'll meet you over there.